yes, you know, my child, he told me to bring a girl with minor child. Do you remember that, Fred? Because I did this three or four months ago, and I used indirect, and I used indirect. And I wanted to dry it out. And that's what I did. I had two burners on the left, and I had a kind of water on the left. And on the right side, I had the hand. Yeah, minor child. I'd like to call our meeting to order, and I'd like to apologize to the viewing audience to begin with for some technical difficulties in starting our meeting late. But I'd like everyone to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll, please. Belke. Here. Belzac. Here. Kenny. Here. Marquez. Here. McIver. Here. Shower. Here. Seifert. Here. Seven present. We have a quorum. The next item on the agenda is a, a, a opportunity to uh, for the, the audience and even the, the city council to ask questions, comments, or make announcements of a general nature. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council at this time? Then I would move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the approval of minutes of the April 6th, April 7th City Council meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Kenny, seconded by Alderman Schauer. Seifert, I believe. Uh, any additions or deletions for the minutes? The roll, please. Kenny. Aye. Seifert. Aye. Schauer. Aye. Marquez. Aye. Belke. Aye. Belzac? Aye. McIver? Aye. Seven ayes. The minutes have been approved. The next item is receiving of communications. Do any of the aldermen have communications to share? Then let's move on. Uh, Mayor's report. Uh, we are, neither one of the candidates are the, uh, the uh, are members of the police pension board are here this evening. I understand uh, one is just getting back in town from a uh, trip and uh, Jim is He's just tonight. getting home from the hospital. So we're going to proceed with the, uh, the motion to approve the reappointments to the police pension board of James Caldwell and Patrick Murphy. Uh, motion made by Alderman Marquez. Second. Ma Alderman McIver. Any questions? The roll, please. Marquez. Aye. McIver. Aye. Seifert. Aye. Schauer. Aye. Belke. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Kenny. Aye. Seven ayes. Uh, both appointments have been approved, and these individuals can come into City Hall to be sworn in. Uh, next item on, under Mayor's report is the uh, Darien Chamber of Commerce update. <coughs> yes, Good Mayor. evening. Darien Dash is only 26 days away. The race will be held on Sunday, May 18th, 8.30 a.m. at Darien Community Park. A reminder to all the residents in the Hinsbrook subdivision about road closures on Sunday morning. Once again, we're looking forward to presenting $2,500 to our local schools and youth organizations. Race bag and t-shirt pickup will be held on Friday, May 16th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, May 17th from 8 a.m. to noon at BMO Harris Bank located at 2275 75th Street in Darien. Advanced discount registration closes at noon on Saturday, May 17th. To register for Darien Dash, visit www.darien-dash.com. The Darien Chamber of Commerce would like to thank the following Darien businesses for supporting the Dash. Bain Center at UMC, Blue Diamond Wealth Management, Walgreens, Home Run Inn, Burr Ridge Veterinarian Clinic, Kuman Math and Reading Center, Chuck Southern Comforts Cafe, BMO Harris Bank, Keith Hanau <coughs> State Farm Insurance, Wild Orchid Salon, DuPage Star Technology, First Merchants Bank, BNR Dentist, and Concentra. We have two ribbon cutting ceremonies this week, Wednesday 5 p.m. Come celebrate the ribbon cutting for James Burke of Edward Jones, which is located at 7702 Cass Avenue. Um, that event will begin at 5 p.m. And another celebration on Saturday, uh, the Indian Prairie Public Library 25th birthday celebration, and they're here tonight to give a little bit more details on that event. The next Solopreneur Connection event will be held this Thursday, 9 a.m. at BMO Harris Bank. The topic will be optimizing your LinkedIn profile. 
This event is open to all Darien business owners who work <coughs> solo. To, regi to register for this event, visit www.darienchamber.com. I'm very excited to announce that I've been chosen to be one of several celebrity dancers to help raise funds for the DuPage Senior Council Dancing with the Stars Gala. This event will be held on Saturday, May 10, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. at Drury Lane, Oakbrook. I'm very proud to be dancing to help raise funds for the seniors in DuPage County. For more details on this event, visit dupageseniorcouncil.org. At this time, I have two guests this evening, and the first guest I'd like to invite is from Kingswood Academy, um, Dr. Madonna Murphy and Yvonne Seaman. I'm so happy to be here and to um, introduce myself. I'm the new principal of Kingswood Academy down the road on Plainfield. Um, I was involved with the beginning of Kingswood in um, uh, 1996 when we were in the ranking the Baptist uh, Church on, Plain on the frontage road. And since uh, 2008, we've, we've been in the old Marion Hill School. And just starting this July 1st, I became the principal of Kingswood. And so wanted to come and thank all of you um, the Darien, uh, we have been, I have been welcomed, and Darien has worked with us so much. The Darien Police Department has been over to help us with safety issues and drills. We've worked with the Darien Fire Department. We've had our fire drills, and then also I've worked very much with the Darien School District, helping all of our students that have any special needs. And so I wanted to thank you for the welcome. <coughs> I'd like to meet all of you and continue a wonderful relationship with you. And so we wanted to tell you about some a fun event we're going to have coming up. And Yvonne Seaman is our, our advancement director, and she wants to invite you all to our Come and Walk event. Thank you so much for letting us come here this evening and share with you. Would you, um, uh, would you use the microphone, please? Thank, thank you, you for having us come this evening and um, to share with you what's going on at Kingswood. We have a few open houses that will be um, coming up. One is this Wednesday, April 23rd at um, 9 a.m. and then at 6.30 p.m. And then May 7th, we have another open house. And it's just for our Darien residents if they want to come and check out um, Kingswood Academy and come and discover what it is that we do. We are a private school, but we um, are very open to um, letting anyone come through our doors and come and discover who we are and what we have to offer the neighborhood and offer Darien as well. Um, we have a walkathon coming up on um, Friday, May 9th. And we really would love to invite you personally, Mayor Weaver and all the councilmen here. We're going to have a live band. We're going to have hot dogs, brats, burgers, all kinds of fun stuff. We, we've got a celebration. It's only going to go till 7 o'clock because it's all young children. <coughs> but um, we would love for all of you just to come by and stop by. We have a couple of sponsors. MB Bank will be there with some of their employees. Um, LA Fitness will be there with some of their employees. And um, Kohl's will also be there with their employees. So we're very excited about this event, <coughs> and we're hoping that some of you will be able to, to join us that evening just for you know some fun. So thank you so much for having us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next, I'd like to invite up um, the Indian Prairie Public Library. We have Marian Caprica and Don Damon. Thanks for having us this evening. Uh, just a few words. Um, the library now is celebrating its 25th year anniversary, which is kind of hard to believe. I know some of you are shaking your heads. And uh, it's been 25 years since the two libraries merged, which was the Willowbrook Library and the Darien Library. We are a district library. We serve close to 44,000 people. For anybody who is new to the area, we are located at the corner of Plainfield Road and Clarendon Hills Road. And it was 25 years ago that it was decided that we would merge. And we moved then into a small facility, which was next to Ashton Place, about 8,000 square feet. Uh, then about 17 years ago, the library was finally built at its current location. And now we have over half a million people who come in every year and use our services. Uh, some of the things, just for people who maybe are watching and don't know all the things that the library can provide, we do have free high-speed internet. We have a vending cafe. That was new with our renovation about two years ago. If you haven't been to the library in a couple years, we have completely remodeled, and we now have um, a family center, a teen lounge, 
We have things for parents and teachers. We have community meeting spaces, uh, exhibit spaces. We have homebound delivery continues. Tax forms, notary. We always have a notary on duty at the library. Uh, we have an ESL collection, a reading garden, and um, we do have um, summer reading program, which is be coming up, and a large volunteer program. So if anybody's looking for volunteer op opportunities. Uh, the library has always experienced a strong community support and um, from community groups and from volunteers. And we invite you to check our website and our building and um, celebrate with us 25 years of serving the community. I'd like to introduce Don Damon, who has uh, the invitation for Saturday. Well, yeah, to celebrate the uh, library's 25th anniversary, this Saturday we're having a family day from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, the event is starting with a ribbon cutting featuring, featuring Mayor Weaver, uh, sponsored by the Darien Chamber, and Congressman Phil Foster will be there too. Mm -hmm. uh, we invite you to join us for the celebration. Um, since the library dates back to about the 1980s, uh, I guess it's a 1980s theme, so I understand the refreshments will probably be Laffy Taffy and Capri Sun. <laughs> But that's it. We invite everybody to come over to the library between 1 and 4 on Saturday and join us to celebrate. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will be there. Thank you. We look forward <coughs> to seeing everyone at all of our events. Thanks. Okay. Let's move to the city clerk's report. Uh, just one item. Um, just a reminder to those who have received statement of economic interest forms from the DuPage County that they are due on May 1 <coughs> and also the city ethics statements are due on May 1st. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, city administrator's report. Uh, one item, uh, Mayor Weaver, I'm noticing on the consent agenda, the again, the chamber is on for the <coughs> uh, uh, Darien Fest. One of the bullet points uh, talks about the provision of police protection uh, for the Darien Fest 2014 <coughs> celebration. And uh, Scott was uh, clarified that with Claire because it was an alternative that the chamber had asked and uh, this uh, represents our past practice of how we charge the uh, for our police or, or um, the uh, cost share for the police services. Just so there's no confusion because there's no backup on that issue. Yeah, I know. I also noticed there was uh, on the item, one of the items on the consent agenda regarding this issue had the <coughs> wrong uh, memo attached to it. Yes. Did you notice that? I noticed that yeah, as well. Yeah. Uh, it, it was the one. Uh, we can get to when we get to the consent agenda. I'll point that out. But okay, is there anything else? Uh, that's all I had, Mayor. Thank okay. you. Okay, let's move to the treasurer's report. Warrant, warrant. Oh, oh I missed right. I ran right over it. I was um, I was gonna make that busy. Yes. Okay. Department head uh, information. Madam Mayor, two quick items. Uh, as uh, some of you may have heard, this <coughs> concrete uh, drivers, the concrete truck drivers, went on strike last week. So the question is. How does this affect us? At this time, it's unknown. Uh, we're hoping that the, the contract will be settled in two weeks. There's nothing magical, uh, no magical statistics about that. So we're very hopeful uh, that that will get settled uh, sooner than later. Uh, obviously, it has an effect on everything that's going on with the city from the 75th Street construction project to the Chase uh, construction project, as well as our road paving projects and all the other things. So it's a pretty big domino effect at this point. Um, so that's number one. We'll keep you posted and to let uh, residents know uh, brush pickup. Yes, we are in spring season here. So next uh, next week, April 21st, uh, we'll be uh, picking up uh, brush starting April 21st here through the uh, 25th. This week? This week, excuse me, not next week. Any other department head reports? Chief? Madam Mayor, City Council members, I have a brief uh, brief summary on some of the things that are going on. I wanted to start out with some tips for citizenry. In January of this year, a new uh, cell phone uh, act was passed, a uh, law governing cell phone use while driving. And basically, it prohibits the use of a, a cell phone unless it's a hands-free device while operating a mo motor vehicle. There are exemptions that can be obtained from by pulling over to use your cell phone. But w what the ultimate goal here is to get folks to stop driving and distracted. Uh, the, the 
all the surveys indicate that when someone is driving and doing anything else other than driving, that that secondary activity takes, play, takes precedent over the driving. And so folks just simply aren't paying attention. So we want, uh, want the, the public to know that it, it's unwise, number one, it's unsafe, and we're going to be escalating our uh, enforcement efforts on, on that issue. Uh, along the same lines with the warmer weather approaching, uh, as motorists, we have to be ever, ever more vigilant uh, for young people being in the street and, and uh, disregarding traffic signals, chasing balls, chasing pets, and things like that. So we need to slow down and be mindful of our speed. We're going to be enforcing that uh, more, more vigilantly as well. Our Darien Community Park, the Safe Parks Initiative, will be uh, activated within the next two weeks. There will be an officer in the park full time. And the, 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 the key component of having this officer presence is to make sure that the folks who want to use the park for the family uh, activities and recreational activities can do so unabated by those with that would uh, interrupt those activities. And <coughs> finally, uh, in terms of public information, uh, the prom season is up on us. And so it would behoove all parents to uh, take some steps to make sure that our children are safe during this prom season. Know where your children plan to go for prom or after prom. Uh, advise them that there may be alcohol present and advise them that if they're going to be driving not to engage in it. Not to engage in it at all because they're under 21, number one, and it breaks the law, but it also creates an enormous safety hazard. Uh, you may want to go to the school and actually talk to your, your uh, prospective uh, graduates about comportment, behavior, uh, what, what can be expected, uh, because there's a lot of freedom on prom night, and, and we want to make sure that our kids come home safe. Uh, know where the alcohol is in your home. Uh, check it uh, periodically to make sure that it's not uh, dwindling. Um, if your child is part of a group of, of teams who, teams who want to chip in and, and rent a limousine, uh, make sure that there are clear-cut directions on where they're to go, who they're to be with, and what time the return time is. Um, one of the things I would advocate against is allowing children to check in or checking into a motel room or a hotel for kids on prom night. That's just a bad, bad practice all the way around. It's uh, quite a common practice, but it's a bad, bad one. That concludes that portion of, of my presentation. Just a little bit about the crime stats. We divide crime stats into two basic categories, uh, 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 year to date and police period. So each police period is a 28-day equal segment uh, and there are 13 police periods in the year. We've just completed the third period. And so we also look at crime by a, comp a comparison of year to date. And so I'll give a couple of categor uh, several categories. Burglary, uh, there was no <coughs> change during this period. We're down 16.7% for year to date. Criminal tra trespass, uh, there's no change. We're down 100% for year to date. Uh, criminal damage to property, we're down 66%. Uh, year to date and 77, 66% for the period and 77% year to date. Uh, disorderly conduct down 60%, uh, down 31% year to date. Theft down 46%, but we're up 17% year to date. Uh, burglaries to the motor vehicle were down, we're down 100%, but we're up 50% year to date. That 50% increase uh, year to date was largely sparked by a rash of uh, uh, burglaries to mo motor vehicles from one individual that we began to monitor. We contacted that person's parole uh, agent. The person was uh, basically banished from operating in Darien, and so we've <laughs> not seen a continuation of that. So <laughs> part of the, 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 the new strategy is working with uh, parole agents, pro probation officers, and things like that to en enact other sanctions. And so he was given a directive not to be in Darien. So we'll, of course, th that's a directive, and we'll have to remain <coughs> vigilant to it. Uh, our 911 calls are down 5.3% five five for the period, but up 6% overall for the year. Uh, motorist assists are up 88% uh, for the time period and up 51% for the year. Adult arrests are up 29.5%, but down by 12% for the uh, year to date. And juvenile arrests are down 37% for the period and down 51% year to date. We're heading in the right direction, but one of the things I want to re really be uh, for us to be mindful of as a city <coughs> is that, that burglaries tend to spike as the weather uh, gets warmer. And as more young people are out of school, and more pe young people are on the street. And so we want to be vigilant to tho those circumstances that will allow a burglar to operate. Uh, if you see something suspicious, pick up the phone and dial 911. Don't assume that it's nothing. It's better for us to respond and, it have and find us for us to find out that it turns out to be nothing than to disregard the suspicious activity and it turns out to be something. Um, 
burglaries to the motor vehicle, I, I can't impress upon you, we would be able to, we, with the, the burglaries that we've had just this year, if all of the vehicles involved were locked, we'd only have two burglaries to the motor vehicle this year, just two. So we, we, we have the capacity as a city to, to <coughs> reduce that number simply by locking our vehicles, keep, keeping our, our uh, valuable belongings out of plain view, and, and just being smart about it. That's all I have, Mayor. Great. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, just a comment for anybody who was following the Chief's report um, on paper. We had that uh, presented to the Police Committee tonight. So if any aldermen or public want to see that report, it's um, on our website under the Police Committee packet but we will send it out in Direct Connect also with a link so any, everybody has easy access to it. And Chief, uh, the question I have or comment, could you clarify the hands-free uh, phone usage in the car for those drivers between 16 and 18? Because I believe for them there's a different rule. Teen drivers have, have no uh, latitude. Uh, youthful drivers must pull over and, and uh, only can they can only operate a, a, a cell phone, whether it's hands-free or hands-activated, while the car is uh, stationary can't be moving. Thank you, Chief. Chief, real quick, because we didn't have a work session tonight, and I'm going to go, because the warrant's coming up here in a few minutes, I'm looking at three items on the police department budget for Advantage Chevrolet, repair parts for fleet vehicles. What's our warranty on our police cars? And I think they're, they're all out of warranty now. All of our new cars are out of warranty now. Okay. Other questions for the Chief? Any, any of the other department heads? Thanks, Chief. Thank you. We took delivery on those cars in uh, early 2012. Okay. So they're, they're, they're out of warranty now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now let's move to the Treasurer's report. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. This evening I'm requesting Council's approval of warrant number 131423, in the amount of $589,737.98 <coughs> from the listed funds and payroll for the period ended April 3rd, 2014 for $246,851.84 for a total to be approved of $836,589.82. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Belzac. Any questions for the, uh, the Treasurer? Anything for the uh, Treasurer? No? Okay. The roll please. Schauer. Aye. Belzac? Aye. Belke? Aye. Penny? Aye. MacGyver? Aye. Marquez? Aye. McCyford? Aye. Seven ayes. Uh, the warrant has been approved. Now, would you want to go over the monthly report? Okay. The uh, monthly report for the 11 months ended March 31st, 2014 reflects general fund year-to-date revenue of $12,550,828, expenditures of $9,829,752 for a current balance of $3,644,662, water fund year-to-date revenue of $4,830,145, expenditures $5,303,076 for a current balance of $399,564, motor fuel tax fund year-to-date revenue of $612,617, expenditures of $688,691 for a current balance of $216,635. Water depreciation fund year-to-date revenue of $63,474, expenditures of $130,170 for a current balance of $676,023. Capital Improvement Fund, year-to-date revenue of $4,487,877, expenditures of $2,922,409 for a current balance of $5,376,565, and the pe Capital Projects Debt Service Fund, year-to-date revenue of $504,317, expenditures $498,775 for a current balance of $13,403. Any questions for the Treasurer on this report? And let's move on to uh, the standing committee reports. Alderman Marquez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a reminder that the Municipal Services Committee will meet next Monday, uh, April 28th at 6.30 here in the Council Chambers. Alderman Schauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Our next admin finance meeting will be held on Monday, May 5th, 2014 at 6 p.m. in our upstairs meeting room. Alderman Geiger. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have a meeting for the Police Committee on May Monday, May 19th, 2014 at 6 p.m. 
in the police training room pending agenda items. And uh, this evening, we also approved the uh, minutes or the meeting minutes from the February 18th, 2014 uh, police committee meeting. Okay. Presented for the record, or yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, the police pension fund will be having their quarterly meeting next Wednesday, uh, April the 30th at 7 p.m. in the police training room. Uh, we'll be represented by the two investment advisors we had going over the performance for the uh, period January through March. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on to questions or comments agenda related since we didn't have a chance to go over any of the items on the agenda this evening. Do any of the aldermen have questions on any of the items on the, let's start with the consent agenda. I think I noted, I, I mentioned before, the, um, the uh, agenda memo that goes with uh, the farmer's market and, and the summer concerts mm -hmm. was incorrect. Uh, but I think you got the gist of it from, yeah, the, the background history was the incorrect information. So, uh, but that is, that's a wonderful event that's being brought forward by the Park District and the, the Chamber. Uh, we're going to have far, a farmer, farmer's market and concerts in the summertime. Quick, qu quick question, M Madam Mayor. Um, for the liquor license waivers, I, for items B and C, I realize, I see that each item is the same, it's the same application. So for each item, so they filled out one application for both items. Is that, yes. is that, is that allowable? Yes. Yes, because yes. they defined on the application what they were actually asking for. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just had a Alderman comment. Belke? I had a comment on um, item E for the consent agenda with the uh, Village of Woodridge and Downers Grove for the fireworks. We talked about this at the admin finance meeting on April 7th. And um, just as a little background, since we did this in 2009 was the last year, um, I believe I was told that the amount that we pitched in at that point was 6900 As everything else does, prices go up. I have a feeling that might yeah. be the effect well, there. What so if, if I recall correctly, wasn't that it was done on a per capita basis? Yes. Back at that point, the agreement between the three communities was that it was done based on population. So Downers Grove, having the largest population, paid the most. Woodridge with the second highest population. Um, once we dropped out, um, they initially took our contribution out and reduced the size of the fireworks. Um, two years into that, Downers Grove went back to Woodridge and said, we want to split it 50-50 now. Um, and they had been splitting it equally at that point. The request to us was that it be split equally between the three communities. Any other questions on any of the items on the consent agenda? Well then let's take a look at the, there's uh, two items under new business. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, from the, the council on those items. Alderman Belke. Regarding the city policy on weapons, my question is <coughs> um, under exceptions, item A, I'm wondering if that would include the auxiliary police. I mean, are they allowed to carry guns? Answer? <laughs> they are not allowed to carry guns. They are not. The auxiliary, auxiliary police officers for Darien are not allowed to carry weapons. Is that something that should be put in here, or do you think that's clear? It, they're covered under the, the, the guidelines of, the, of other city employees because we, we don't arm our okay. officers, uh, our auxiliary officers anyway. Okay. <coughs> Any uh, other I mean questions? I guess I have a question, I guess. Um, as far as, you know, let's say Alderman MacGyver has a license to carry a weapon and she left the book club to drive home and make dinner and she gets flagged down by Stan. Stan says, hey, I want you to come check out my sewer, my sump pump, or the neighbor's sump pump is start charging into my backyard. And she gets out of her car with her, ve with her weapon on her. She's violating this ordinance. I mentioned that at the police committee meeting. It's right. the exact same thing here this, after this evening. So even, I mean, she may have forgotten that she's carrying the gun in her purse, but now she's in violation of this ordinance. Well, and I, I don't, I this, is, this is the state law. Per is that right. correct? The, the state law governs um, regulations of the places. The state law governs the places, but uh, the, the policy governs their interactions of employees of the city 
uh, during the performance of their duty. I wouldn't see that in incidental contact, residential contact, as a violation of the policy. Uh, that, that would be my perspective as a law enforcement officer. But, I mean, I guess, read it, I mean, the way I read this policy, yeah, it, it would violate like it. it. It would be. It would be a violation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a number of agents and elected officials are, are kind of all within that. We have attorneys, we have city engineers, we have a lot of um, people that are associated with the city. The intent of the policy is really to, um, to have um, agents of the city or elected officials of the city not go and, and do that. Um, but um, if there is interest in amending the, the policy in some way, we can do that. And Scott, in, in Alderman Seifert's example, is uh, they wouldn't violate the policy if they were able then to put their car, uh, uh, a firearm secured in the car. I'm not familiar that's enough. That's, that's correct. correct, yeah. So then Alderman the guy would have to say, Stan, hold on, I gotta lock yeah. my gun okay. in the yeah. trunk before I can come look at your thumb pump. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly right. I mean, I'm more concerned about the inadvertent. I mean, you know. Right. She may, I mean, she comes from the book club. She's carrying a gun. She doesn't realize. She's that coming that from a book club yeah. with yeah. a gun. There was a good book club. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Different kind of books. Meeting violent things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a confrontational <laughs> book club. I'll yeah. tell you. So, yeah. keeping the books. <laughs> but certainly, that's I mean, that's one of the problems with the law. Well, yeah. I think I, I think what the alderman points out is really one of the problems with the law that there's still some some gaps involving you know inadvertent problems. I mean, you've there's a provision in the law that allows people to have their weapon while they're riding their bicycle to the forest preserve as long as they're on the paved area. <laughs> Question, what happens if somebody has to go to the bathroom while they're pedaling through? So I think there's, there's a lot of problems that are going to have to work themselves out with the law, but I think really the intent of this is to control our people in and on our property. And I don't think that, I don't think that any I don't think anybody would ticket somebody or, or find a violation for an inadvertent, inadvertent case like that. Uh, Gil, what is what are you looking at in particular in terms of the policy? Maybe we can take a quick look at. Well, I mean, just I mean, if I put the whole together, I mean, I, I guess I would be a city official, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm conducting official city business when I'm talking to Stan about his thumb pump discharge, yeah. right? Uh, whether whether he's flagging me down or whether I'm going there on my own. Right. Uh, well. I guess from safety's sake, you should put the you should put the weapon in the trunk. So, if there's an argument about the sump pump, bad things won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> or just drive past me. Anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk to you. Run him over. <laughs> Run him over. So I'm I'm guessing I ha from what you're saying here, there seems to be a lot of uh, little things in the in the law that's the law. in existence now that might have to be uh, addressed because they simply are oh. covering every every. Everything. Well, I think I think you know I agree with Attorney Murphy. There's a lot of problems with the law the way it's written, and I'm not sure that adding more questions to it necessarily does anything. I mean, if the intent is to not have city officials, I mean, I guess I just think it's the policy is too wordy in my opinion. I mean, if, if you don't want city officials doing city business with guns, then just say that. Um, you know, but I mean, another loophole I saw the other day was. You know, a lot of parking garages will have the sticker on the on the when you're driving in that you can't carry a weapon. So really, anybody that parks in that garage cannot walk out with a weapon, even if they're leaving the garage. So there's another problem with it. So there's a lot of problems with it. And again, here we're just adding more confusion. I think. The way we we did have have a two to one vote in the um, police committee meeting this evening. Um, I think my personal perspective <laughs> was it was a liability concern that um, employees. You know, I, I, we were thinking less about officials talking to residents as opposed to um, employees of, say, you know, Dan's department having to enter a home to replace a water meter or something like that. And the intent is we don't really, we don't think it's in the city's best interest for the residents to have someone that's armed walking into work, you know, when they're, you know, just there for city business to take care of something in someone's personal home. Um, but that is covered in the, in the, the our, our employees cannot walk into anyone's home with a gun. Th that's, I think, that's the expansion on this policy. It, the, 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 I think it only covered the police department, didn't cover ancillary employees previous, previously. At least that was my understanding. Well, but I would think city, city employees cannot, well, I know they can't have a gun at the place of employment because it's a government right. building. 
And if they're driving a city truck, they certainly can't have a gun on them in the city truck. Well, if, if you use an, the example of the public works water department employee who is going to fix a water meter, or if you use me or, or Dan as an example even, um, if we were responding to a resident in some way, um, if, if an employee such as that was licensed to carry a, a gun, um, the, the state law wouldn't be sufficient to cover that. Um, th this policy would keep um, other employees that are not sworn officers from having a gun in those situations. But uh, they can't have it in the city vehicle, I would think, right? So this would cover, so I might not be in a city vehicle or Dan might not be in a city vehicle or other employees or agents aren't always in city vehicles. And we don't have any city policy that employees can't carry that's guns? That's, that's what this would be for. That's what yeah, this is that, that's kind of that's where really this what this covers. Yeah. So we're the blanket amendment of all employee policies. E yes, of, I'm sorry, officials did not just mean elected officials. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, I know. And, and, and agents, you know, hired like uh, our engineer, civil engineer, whatever uh, the case may be. Um, it, it's also uh, agents of the uh, attorney Murphy couldn't, couldn't do it, <laughs> would you? Um, so that, that, that was, I think, what it, we were more um, focused on was kind of the, uh, the liability perspective for the, from the city perspective. One, one thing the committee also talked about was kind of the bleed over effect. So if somebody is walking into the local grocery store and there's a no gun sign posted, they can't bring their firearms there. Or if, a, if you go to a resident's house and they say, I don't want the firearm here. So I don't know if that also means a disclosure or what, but that was another, just a couple of items that the committee also discussed. Now, what's the difference between, and I don't, I I'd read it at some point, but I don't recall what it said. What's the difference between this proposed one and the one that was previously proposed by a couple weeks ago? Uh, they are the same. Um, there was just a question back uh, approximately two months ago on whether or not the Heritage Center would be included in government buildings. So we went back to get an answer on that first. And uh, the Heritage Center, as long as we do own it, is considered a government building. Give you an example. If I, I'm looking at that one about employees on, on duty. Let's let's assume for a second that we get a snow ice blow up and an employee is called back from the house. He's got a right to have that weapon if he's got the permit. And and he's told, you know, stop at Walmart and pick up eight cases of water for the guys. At that point, he couldn't. He has got to lock the car because he's on city business going into Walmart. That would be an example of of doing doing city duties while being off the city premises. Yeah. If there's no uh, interest in changing any language in this, uh, we'll leave it on the, on the ag agenda as is. Alrighty, so now I'd like to open up the, um, well, we, we didn't, well, we had, a, we had the opportunity for our residents, anyone in the audience to address any of the items on the agenda, so we'll just move ahead to the consent uh, to old business, and there being no old business, we'll move right on to the consent agenda, and I'll read the items that are on the consent agenda for our viewing audience. Our first uh, item is a motion to approve September 5, 6, and 7 as the uh, as the as the Darien Fest 2014 celebration, and to include all the closures of streets around uh, the Darien Community Park that are affected by the Darien Fest and uh, the provision of for police protection uh, for the Darien Fest celebration. The next item is a motion granting a waiver of the $50 <coughs> fee for the temporary license, liquor license for the Darien Fest. Item C is a motion granting a waiver of $50 a day fee for the temporary liquor license for the, uh, the joint uh, 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 park district and Chamber Farmers Market and Summer Concerts for the following dates of June 11th, June 18th, June 25th, July 2nd, July 9th, July 16th, July 23rd, July 30th, <coughs> August 6th, August 13th, and August 20th. The next motion is to approve Our Lady of Peace's Crusader Challenge 2014. It's a 5K run, a one mile walk on Sunday, August 24th and all the road closures that will be uh, will need needed for that race. Uh, the, the last item on the consent agenda is a motion to approve a, re a resolution agreeing to work with the Village of Woodridge and Village of Donners Grove to provi provide 
fireworks display at Zigfield Troy Golf Course on the 4th of July by contributing an amount not to exceed $8,000. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Alderman Schauer, second by Alderman Belke. Dis uh, no discussion. The roll, please. Schauer? Aye. Belke? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Marquez? Aye. McIver? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Seven ayes. All items have been approved. Uh, let's move to new business. Uh, item A under new business is a motion to approve a resolution adopting a city of Darien policy on weapons. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Marquez? Seconded by Alderman McIver. Any further discussion? Then the, then the roll, please. Marquez? Aye. McIver? Aye. Shower? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Um, Kenny? No. Belzac? Aye. Belke? Aye. Six ayes and one nay. The um, motion has been approved. Item B is a motion to approve an ordinance authorizing a certain property exchange and development agreement between the City of Darien and Colonial Manor. Uh, Colonial Manor. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, a, s a motion by Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Belke. Discussion? Is it worth mentioning for the audience what this is? Yeah, this is... Uh, why don't I let you do it so I don't say something out of school here on, yes, regarding the, the swap on the property. Okay, uh, this, um, s what we're calling swap of property has to do with uh, the uh, development plans for the, what's currently the Heritage Center. A while back, uh, Dan Gombeck had identified a site plan which um, incorporating the current Colonial Manor is a small sliver of property 25 feet uh, in width uh, where the old shell was and that was enough to help our development solidify some additional uh, parking and help our site plan so uh, eventually Dan had worked with the owner of those apartments and we have a small parcel that's uh, separately platted on their property it used to be an old uh, something for the water system which in reality is a service for that property so as part of the discussions with Colonial Manor we thought a um, swapping those two pieces of property uh, would be a benefit to actually both of us. So there's no dollars involved, but it will certainly help the uh, Heritage Center uh, development coming forward. And in the um, in the agenda material, there's a kind of an over uh, aerial view showing the two parcels uh, that will be swapped. Very good. Any any further discussion? Uh, the roll, please. Shower. Aye. Belke. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Kenny. Aye. Ma Marquez. Aye. McIver. Aye. Seifert. Aye. Seven ayes and no nays. Okay. I uh, I'd like to take the opportunity uh, tonight. Uh, we had uh, we had grand plans oh. to uh, talk about the uh, uh, the letter we received from the Darien Historical Society and and work out some uh, some questions that we had. Uh, but because of our uh, work, our executive session this evening, we weren't able to dedicate too much time to that. So I thought we'd take a few minutes uh, to maybe uh, wrestle with some of the uh, the issues uh, that uh, staff has uh, has brought forward on the on the memo that you had in front of you this evening. Um, and uh, to start the discussion, we know that the the historical society has asked us to take over their uh, their facility. And uh, and that's about where we know it is right now. They they need funding, uh, they need a dedicated uh, source of funding, and they're looking to us uh, for that. So uh, with that said, I, we I asked the council at our last city council meeting to come forward with their questions, and there were none. I think uh, <laughs> I think now is your opportunity to ask some questions, uh, and we need to. We, there's a lot of questions to be answered on this issue as to exactly how this would work out should we decide as a council to move forward and take over the historical society and some of the questions, some of the uh, items, uh, questions that uh, Scott put together for us on uh, in regarding the, the building, the structure, the finances can help us in this discussion. So. I'd like to open it up to the floor. Yeah, yes. I'm sorry, uh, just one <coughs> clarification. I, I see some members of the Historical Society 
in the audience. Uh, just to recap, I think last meeting, uh, Mayor, when you mentioned that, there was some discussion about should we have the uh, commission here first or not, and I think that what the council thought would be best was for the council to come up with questions, and then once they did that for tonight's meeting, then we would approach the historical society. Yeah. So it was a matter of it's timing and what came first. Yes, we uh, the the plan at at first was to invite you to be part of all of the discussion, but then when we really thought about it, we needed to have our questions, our our ideas in 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 order here in order to bring you in and and discuss those items with you. So. I would like to open it up to the council and, and their thoughts here. I'm sorry, yeah. one more. Uh, Alderman Belke did, had sent me something later in the afternoon. I hadn't sent it out yet, but I'm sure as did you're you going want through to your comments, that? you'll yes. address yeah. those. I yeah. can address some things. Um, the first thing is regarding the actual capital, capital needs. Um, so it's about approximately $42,000 of capital. Um, the, the concern I would have in the proposal or for the city to take it over would be that the city pretty much finances the um, the project, but then the historical society would run run the show. So I just see a disconnect with if we're going to put money up, then I think we need to be part responsible or have some kind of um, agreement of how that's supposed to take place. I don't think they should run separately if if we got the money, um, you know. That's that was that was yeah that the was the, the biggest question have right better there. control over yeah. that yeah. that was one thing um, some of my constituents aren't interested in um, find, you know putting any money up for this particular cause so that that is a problem um, and I I want to understand some of these struggles that the historical society has I see it as a generation thing as well I think that the older generation um, you know has a is a heart in this and but when I see the younger generation and now the kids of the younger generation, I don't see, you know, a lot of interest there, unfortunately. So um, I guess my concern, too, is that this is an ongoing uh, matter. I mean, even though you need these capital needs this year, you know, you're going to have to budget for replacement um, going forward, too. So so it is a, it, it's a costly thing. Um, and I didn't know if there was other solutions. I like this idea of having this committee, you know, brainstorm and have some suggestions. Um, and that's that's kind of where I stand on that. Okay. I've been to the last couple of um, intergovernmental meetings that they had where that was a topic. And at those meetings, I threw some su threw some ideas out what they could do. So forgive me if I didn't come up with anything formally. Um, the one thing um, you've often heard is you don't, you can't get to some place unless you know where you come from first. So we have to show the value of the historical society to, to our to our youth. That being said, and I and I and I agree with you. I don't feel that we should be funding something, and then another entity is running it. What I'd like to see happen is come up with a you know maybe a, a three year or five year plan, saying okay, these are going to be like the jumper cables, if you will. We're going to we're going to re rejuvenate you. Maybe have the historical society in some kind of receivership. And have that goal in place, and, and say, in 2019 that we're going to, you know, restructure it and get it moving, and, it, and that's an educational component to the youth of the community, so that we can show the, the value of it, and then for them to move forward. <coughs> yeah. I, I, I guess I have a question more than anything else. Assuming we do go forward and decide to fund improvements to the the facility itself, as I understand it. The property is owned by District 61, and we're a tenant. We're leasing it back from them. If we go and put in whatever dollars they are, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, what's to prevent District 61 after we get the building all up to snuff from turning around and saying, hey, your lease is up after five years. Now it's ours, and we've got a nice, fully improved building. Well, that's that was uh, the first item on, on, her, uh, on your uh, fact sheet here. Uh, that would have to be addressed with the, with the school. How how would this structure be? How would it be structured? And maybe it would be deeded over. Yeah, it's there's those are the those are the questions that we have to answer and and work out with the school, since it's theirs. And I think they have a vested interest in working with us on on this because should uh, we walk away from this, it's their ballywick, and uh, I don't know if they're prepared to uh, to to deal with that. 
Well, I think Alderman Belke might have mentioned it in the email, if I'm not mistaken. One of the things would be to look at is where would would that be the ultimate location too? I think, you know, if there was a brainstorming session, there might be another location, maybe that doesn't need work or that might suit um, that better. I don't know that there is or isn't, but I think that's something that. Well, Alderman Belke was suggesting dispersing all of the archives into, you know, the the library and other places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that was what you you su were suggesting in your your right, email. Right. And the other thing is <coughs> I would like to, I don't know if this is on the list, but maybe an inventory. Um, you know, what, what artifacts, I hear there's a wedding dress in there or something. So You're really on top <laughs> of it here, <laughs> so Alderman Belke, yes. I've been watching the TV <laughs> shows. <laughs> but, you know, an inventory so we can really figure out, like, what's going to be ongoing costs. The archives, of course, have to have room te temperature and, you know, things like that. But, you know, maybe we can decipher it up a little bit in categories. Alderman Seifert? I think this is my initial reaction when I saw this, and I know we've talked about this a couple times. I guess I don't really know where we're at or where the historical society is at now as far as inventory, as far as what needs to be done, as far as the leases. So I, I can't really guess to where we should be if I don't know where we're at right now. So I guess I would just need what more. Do yeah, what do, you need, what do you feel you need to, uh, to know? I to mean, leases, inventories, exactly maybe three-year plan of where it's going to go. But us taking it over seems like an open-ended question. I mean, I don't know. Well, I think we were all copied. We co you copied everyone on the leases, right? I, I think I saw one lease. I'm not sure. Did yeah, I, 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 I think both? we. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, there's. Yeah, there was two. Did I? All right, then I missed that one. The, um, I saw the one. They yeah. forecasted up until 2017. Okay. I mean, I know that it, it's. They're know, easy it's out leases. It's as they're very written out. Uh, general, but it's. Well, we have an. We have a. We have a. How many days out at any time? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. easy out at any point. Yeah. I think it's 30 days, 60 days yeah. notice. We sublease to the historical society. Well, now, the things that you were just talking about, it seems to me that we need to develop that plan if we were to go forward. Alderman McIver? But I, I guess I, I agree with Alderman Seifert. The, um, it's, it's, it's really, we don't have like kind of an executive overview of kind of the status of the society. You know, they've got a building. I mean, as part of the, you know, there's the ar archives piece, but then there's Old Lay School. And that seems tied to the district, and yet it's the the home of it. And I think there's a reason that it's the home of it. I mean, is it the plan to just save the archived materials, or is it a plan to save that particular structure? Is it that structure at that location, that structure somewhere else? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. And again, you know, we don't they don't own the property, they don't own the school or the the the, the land. So is it just what's inside the facility, and then you know, then you're not dumping the capital to keep the school, old lay school, as a you know part of the society itself. So I think it's kind of you know I think that it's a little bit since the the s historical society is looking to the city to you know essentially bail them out. I'd like to see kind of like an executive plan of you know where they're at, where they hope to be, and what is their ultimate well, goal. What are they hoping okay, to Okay. Yeah, save? it's it's uh, it's unfortunate uh, uh, sitting here right now. Um, uh, to me, we're going to have to continue this discussion because we need to have the leases in front of us. We need to have that that uh, the plan the, ex the 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 plan that the that all of us receive copies of already uh, regarding the all of their needs. Yes. It, it I just th I think the purpose of tonight again was for the council, you know, to go through those questions. We would assemble those and get answers for the council. I don't think we didn't, at least staff didn't expect the council to have, you know, maybe answer all these things. But your questions and Sylvia's, uh, we want to assemble those, get those answers, and then come back so we can have y the information that the aldermen would would need. So if we we can assemble these types of questions. Well, yeah, you, you're going to be listening to the tape to get all the questions right. that, uh, well, that the alderman just yeah, What is yeah. the goal of the historical society? Is it to protect and preserve the history, and then it has nothing to do with the building or that location? Then that takes the capital part of it as far as the, the getting the building up to snuff and the lease portion of it off the table. So if, if it doesn't, you know, if the location is immaterial, and it's just a preservation and maintenance of that, pres you know, and, and having someone who is doing something with respect to the, r you know, the maintaining that history, you know, it's different than the actual structure itself because that, that's the, the facility itself is what I think has got the most significant capital needs. And that is the property, of, as I understand it, of the school district, as is the land it sits on. 
my, my gut feeling is that uh, initially there would be a, a, an, a, a, an infusement of a n number of dollars to get to get things archived and uh, and some of the facility up to up to up to improvement but after that I don't see a very hef hefty budget after that right but mm. is it necessary to spend any money at that facility if, if you can take that material and put it say in the library as part of the you know that's where the location of the historical information is going to be or wherever well, it may be now we're, now we're expanding <laughs> now we're expanding the group to include the well the, the library well, no, in I'm this discussion sure. yeah. and I don't know if we have no, that even authority no, to no, 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 no. to do I, that what I'm saying is it's just where is it or is it going <coughs> to be up in a room here in, in City Hall you know or is that the archives going to be you know I don't know um, the question is is that building critical to this decision because if you're taking the building and the, pr and the lease out of it, then that's a huge piece of yeah. the puzzle that goes away. That's a very good question. Add that yeah, add add that's that for to sure. The yeah, that's also, I, I don't know if it would be, uh, I, I would like to get the feeling of everyone <coughs> on the board right now uh, whether they feel this is important to, to, to even exp uh, explore. To do, do you think this is a, is a value to the city to take this facility over in whatever structure we come up with? Yeah, I think that I, I like the idea of a committee, you know, put together. Um, certainly, we didn't budget for it, so there you go. But um, the committee for no, I'm saying no. for the budget that we just approved, it wasn't in here. Oh, you mean for the expenses for the? For our, oh, yeah. For oh, okay. I thought you meant the cost of a committee. So I think that <laughs> it's worth <laughs> talking about, and I don't see any harm with that. Um, getting together a committee, maybe the committee would consist of a few council members. Um, maybe it would consist of somebody from the District 61, maybe somebody from the Historical Society, and then also um, somebody from the library or something like that. So, you know, just put our heads together and, and get the questions answered and then try to figure out the best way. But I don't think, you know, as you said, it's not our intent to say yes or no today without some of these questions answered. But um, my view is worthy to explore at least. And okay. the committee would explore uh, long-term financing mostly, well, would, or you how know, at the beginning would be these these points here. These points, okay, mm -hmm. got it. In addition to what we're talking about today. Well, uh, if we if if we would even bother to put a committee together to explore this, we would need to know up front whether we have we have the heart to do this to to uh, even possibly take this over. I mean, why would we spend time in a committee if if we're not we're not uh, you know committed to uh, to, might, to taking this over? Because you might not know how well it is unless you've gone ahead and brainstormed with the committee, and then maybe at the end of you know a, a task force of some sort, you find out what kind of energy you have, if it's worth if it's worth going forward with it, because we really haven't had anything formal. We get. You know, we got a reminder this afternoon at 20 after 1 about, about this, you know, about this issue. You were today. told two weeks ago to come forward we also, with, yeah. we, also, we also got a reminder tw at 20 after 1 today on a Monday when I, you know, when we've all got other things going on, Mayor, with all, with all due respect. So I think if a committee is not a bad idea to find out what kind of energy we have towards this. So yeah. my oh. example would be, you know, from the, from the constituents I talk to, they say just flat out no. So what I'm saying is I could say no right now because that's what they're telling me, but I also think it's fair for everybody involved, you know, to just to give it another shot. Alderman Balzac, you had your hand raised. I, I think we have to have some type of cost-benefit analysis here. You can, it's, it's easy to say, yeah, we want to do it, but if it costs a million dollars, we're not going to do it. If it's, uh, yeah, since we really don't know what the costs are, you really can't make that judgment. Well, you all had the business plan. Uh, we, I think we need to resurrect that again so you have that in front of you to look at to see what was what was prepared by the Historical Society Those already. Those are just the uh, immediate needs of the building. Those are more but of the capital needs, right, I think. Right. But yeah. you can see, I think you can see from that report what would be the ongoing needs also. But again, I think without a committee saying, you know, yeah, yes, we, we want to maintain the history of Darien, and this is what, you know, the building, it doesn't make sense to keep the building, it doesn't make sense, you know, it, but there are things that we can do and maintain the history and it won't cost $42,000, it would cost $5,000 a year. That's a big difference. And then, you know, where where might it, might this, you know, I don't even know how much space the this, 
you know, all this archived in material would take up. I mean, there's a lot of, un there's so many unknowns. I, I think it's kind of unfair to say yes or no at this point. I would say too, I would uh, agree with Alderman Belke that if I were to pull my residents, they'd be like, no thanks. Um, because they're, they don't see the value. I mean, it's not like Darien's 200 years old and you're gonna, you know, it's, it's relatively young and um, without having someone with the fortitude to um, really highlight, I, I'm a lifetime member of the Historical Society and I support it, but you know, I, I, that, I, that interests me but it doesn't necessarily interest other people. Th you know, they, they'd rather look it up online than actually go to the facility and look at something, you know? Um, it just, I think it's just a, <coughs> our society has moved in that direction. And that's the goal for the historical society, frankly, is to be able to be an online library for, for residents. Right, so then you don't need to spend $42,000 to fix a building. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true, though. I think that the, I, from what I read from their plan, it's not just uh, an opportunity to fix a building, but it's an opportunity to create an ongoing educational experience for both residents and children within the city of Darien. With proper funding, that, that facility may be open more than once a month to, uh, to citizens as well as to children, to school children to come in and explore the history. P as, a, as an educator and as a history teacher when I taught, when you expose people to certain elements, they become very excited about it. Until they have that knowledge, they don't know what they're missing. And unfortunately, in our society, uh, history gets shunned very easily. We're more concerned about where we are today, our technology, our iPhones, and where we might be going, than what brought us here. You know, and, and I'm a firm believer that if you don't understand where you came from, you're going to repeat the errors of the past. I firmly believe that. So I, I think that their program goes beyond that. You know, I've hesitated to talk. I, I, I wanted to listen. I think the committee idea is fine. Um, I, I, I think that we need to explore a lot of the questions, and it appears there's a lot of questions. Uh, I don't know how the residents in my ward feel. I don't, you know, I haven't had anybody call me up or email me and tell me I don't like historical society, I have no interest in history. I haven't had that. So I don't know where they are with regard to that. But I would be more than interested in hearing answers to some of the questions that all of you have tonight and I think a committee structure would be good for that so I would support the idea of a committee. Could I, I just want to counterpoint one, one thing on um, Alderman uh, Marquez's point. So the ed I, I, I like the idea of the education program but and if I heard that that one day a month their book solid you know that they they don't have enough resources to maintain that but if that once a month is in even being utilized, then I'd say, is there an interest? You know, and, and if not, then how are they going to build that interest to, you know, have more programs available? Uh, you know, because how long has it been around, and it doesn't seem like they're really utilizing that now, or taking advantage of it now. So that's my concern. That, and then okay, so they're going to hand, you know, pass the potato, and you know, because they haven't been really able to generate that interest. You know, who in the city is going to take it on? You know, because that would be then a city. I guess, you know, we're not going to be just the funding. Someone's going to have to be involved with that because, you know, from my perspective, if we're, if we're infusing capital into it, then we have to have a vested stakeholder interest in it, just like anything else that we do. We have to have control over it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 yes, uh, Mayor Weaver, I'm, I think the original game plan was actually a, was a very good one, and if the staff could assemble the questions we've heard tonight, We'll, we'll consolidate those. We'll send those back to the, to the aldermen. And if you have more questions, you can email those to us if we haven't covered everything. And uh, two weeks ago, we said once we get these questions assembled, we'll send them to the Historical Society and invite them to the next meeting to specifically answer. Because otherwise, we, you know, people have different level of involvement with the Historical Society. And it really, you, you can't have the discussion without getting the questions answered. So we could certainly do that. So the intent would be to summarize the questions, get any additional questions, forward those to the uh, Historical Society, and then two weeks from tonight, ask that they come to address those. And not just address it, but I think they need to sell the City Council and the residents that are viewing on, you know, keeping this initiative going. And I think you, I, I think Brian and Scott, I think you have identified the, the three areas that we need to address and, uh, br and bring questions under each one of those categories. And 
uh, let's bring make sure we have the leases handy and the business plan that the uh, Historical Society did present to us already. Alderman Schauer. Madam Mayor, if we're going to end up even thinking about investing 42000 in the Historical Society, why can we not go over there as a committee, as the entire, entire City Council, without violating the Open Meetings Act, to take a look around and, and see what we have over there? I mean, I mean, you can have. I mean, you can have a meeting there as long as it's posted, no, and proper notification. I mean, uh, yeah, it's only open two, you know, two hours basically a month. But I, I, it's been a few years since I've been there. I'd like to see what we got going on, and if we can, we should go there as a city council and start taking a look and, and start asking some questions what they have. That's the first thing we need to do before we even need to go any farther than with a committee or anything like that. Yeah, it's obviously the more challenging because for us it's the Open Meetings Act for the Historical That's Society. That's the problem. You yeah. know, they're, they're very flexible. So, again, that the question period uh, that we're talking about of selling the Historical Society is something that we can certainly and proceed with, and if the council wants to meet there, that's up to the council. But well, maybe to Alderman Shower's point, maybe we have a meeting a half. Our work session starts a half hour earlier one Monday, and we go there, you know, and, and then well, just seven. like the uh, you went over and looked at that facility right, over at the right. post training room, do that a half right, hour and ahead then of we time. We just come back here and <coughs> continue our meeting. I still think I, I I think the game plan is good though. That let's let's get the questions on paper. Uh, let's get let let's get that discussion going. I and then we can do a field trip. I want to add that I've been there recently, and I think an inventory is going to help more because it's an overwhelming um, amount of space with, with different things everywhere. So even if I saw it again, I still would have the questions that I have of, mm -hmm. you know, you know, documenting all the inventory there and what, what does it need to preserve and, you know, those kind of questions. Um, and then I wanted to add to Marquise's point about the education. I don't think that the education piece should go away at all because it is, you know, we always want to bring up where we came from and how the city grew, but does it have to be from that building? You know, there's other ways to get that message out. From the Women's Club, you know, we've had some people represent the women, um, the Historical so Society come and do a presentation, and I think those are good things face-to-face -face where they come to, you know, meetings in the community and bring pictures in this case. They brought the book, you know, and they talked about things um, and did presentations. So I, I would like to continue that too. I think that's a great And program. I think they do a nice job with those lunches, you know, because I've gone to a couple of those where, you know, they, they do the- um, Oh, you yeah. mean the Sunday dinner? Yeah, <laughs> the Sunday dinner. I mean, I think those are very enjoyable. And, you know, we have a great location that hosts those. So, I mean, it, there's pr definitely, again, I've, I've worked Tag Day. I'm a, I'm a lifetime member. I support it, but I think we still have to look at it, you know, very holistically. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you very much for all of your input. Uh, we'll we'll uh, address this again in our, our next city council meeting. Mayor, yes. by addressing it, we'll it will invite the we're inviting the historical society. Well, uh, you know what? I, I I think it would be premature again to, to have them because we need to answer the questions. We ni need to identify those questions that are in, that we're going to have as our. A, ma a discussion material. Right. What I had meant is we will assemble those questions, send them to the Historical Society, and invite them to answer those at the next meeting. That's what I thought. Okay. Assuming yeah, they can get them answered and they're available. Okay. W it sounds like we're going to have a lot of questions for yeah. them. So. Alrighty. Yes, Alderman Marquez. A whole different note. <laughs> Nothing to do with Historical Society. The Darien Lions Club is sponsoring a uh, Humanitarian of the Year Award. Uh, unlike the Citizen of the Year Award, the Humanitarian of the Year Award focuses on Darien and surrounding communities. So candidates for this award can be people who are in Donners Grove, Woodridge, uh, Westmont, Hinsdale, Clarendon Hills, Burr Ridge. Uh, materials were sent out to schools. I think Madonna received uh, a letter uh, as the principal of Kingswood Academy, the uh, churches, every church, Holy Trinity, St. Joe's, Notre Dame, St. Isaac's, all received materials. I think Mayor Reed has got a copy of the letter, or Scott got the copy of the letter. So we're looking for candidates. The uh, deadline was going to be this next week, and what we're doing now is we're extending that deadline so that it'll go into May. The award will be given out in June. It's, uh, again, a recognition of someone who who performs a humanitarian service, uh, and, and that's a little unlike 
the Citizen of the Year Award. And it's not meant to duplicate that because we do great things with our Citizen of the Year Award. But the Humanitarian of the Year Award could be could honor someone who doesn't live in the city of Durham but is, is known by people in the city or in the surrounding communities. So I wanted to announce that tonight because when all the material went out, it said the closing deadline was April 21st, which was tonight. And that's not true. We're extending that into now. So if anybody knows of anyone that they'd like to nominate through their church or through uh, any organization they belong to, Kiwanis or whatever, uh, go to the Daring Lions Club website and take a look at the data and the criteria and the nomination form. I would ask you to do that. And then uh, if you want to nominate, go through the process and do it. Thank you. Announcements? Uh, yeah, I have one more um, item. Uh, Recently, our police committee started to uh, do different things during our, our uh, police committee meetings as far as um, either kind of, look, you know, looking over some different facility items at the, um, uh, the police department itself. Uh, today, we had the um, uh, demonstration of the, um, the simulator. What, what's the specific name of it? Yeah, firearm simulator. Firearm si si simulator. So I would um, urge... Uh, council members and others that are interested to check the uh, police committee agendas to see if they might be interested in coming over to see those things because that was very um, eye-opening the uh, informative mm -hmm. yeah the simulator was today so uh, again just just check what's on for that particular uh, meeting okay third Monday of the month thank you any other announcements I'd like to open it up to the floor if anyone uh, would like to address the council And I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman MacGyver, seconded by Alderman Schauer. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.